All right, so um, we're going to be going into uh, section 8.8, .8, part A, which is uh, called improper integrals. And um, what we're going to do with that is we're going to be noticing how some integrals may have like infinite limits up on the top, or in some cases, they have numbers that don't work in between. Uh, let me try to adjust my chair here. So uh, we'll kind of see how, how all that works out. Um, but here are basically the main things you have to be aware of, okay? So number one, if f is continuous on an interval, from a to positive infinity, then the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx is equal to the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Yeah, that's the first one. Second says if f is continuous on an interval from negative infinity to b, then the integral from negative infinity to b of f of x dx is equal to the limit as a goes to infinity from a to b of f of x dx. Okay, now there is a third part says if f is continuous on an interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, then an integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of f of x dx okay, is going to be equal to an integral from negative infinity to c of f of x dx plus an integral from c to positive infinity of f of x dx. And you get to pick that c. Most people usually pick like 0 or something like that. But you can pick whatever that number happens to be. Just make sure that it works for the function. Okay. But like I said, most people will pick like a 0 or a 1 or something like that. Okay. Now that C value is a real number. It can be anything as long as it's a real number. Now at that point, notice how we have uh, two separate um, improper. Here's one improper integral. Here's another improper integral. Um, well, the first one is talking about 2, and the second one is talking about 1. Right, so then you would have to split it up like that again. Okay, so you have to rewrite that after you rewrote it. Okay, so if you happen to have something like part three, then uh, you have to end up breaking it apart two different times. So let me show you how this stuff works. So again, these are called improper integrals because um, they don't really exist at the at the upper or lower values in this case. Okay, at infinity, you can't go all the way towards infinity. You can't find the area um, all the way up to infinity. Like that's not possible, right? So that's why they call it improper. So we have to kind of fix it. We have to find it theoretically. So uh, here's one of them, and this will be kind of an easy one just to intro. For you guys. 
So since the upper bound is infinite, then we have to rewrite it like this. Limit as b goes to infinity from 1 to b of 1 over x dx. And we're going to do the um, integral of 1 over x dx, okay? So this is the limit as b goes to infinity. Now the integral of 1 over x dx is ln of the absolute value of x from 1 to b. You'll notice these aren't terribly difficult. It's just you're going to have to write a little extra. That's all. So limit as b goes to infinity of ln of the absolute value of b minus ln of the absolute value of 1. I just plugged in my limits. But remember, uh, my bounds, I'm sorry. So remember, ln of 1 is 0. So this goes away. So basically, I have the limit as b approaches infinity of ln of b. I just took a little extra step there. Well, now you're supposed to use direct substitution. So that's the ln of absolute value of infinity, which is infinite. Okay. We say that this limit diverges, okay, because it doesn't have an actual value. Okay. So let me just put right here, the limit diverges. Okay. But your answer is infinite. Okay. So you did all the work the way you normally should when you integrate. You just had to eventually plug in an infinity into these things. Now, the answers aren't always infinite. I mean, you could get halves. You could get all this other stuff. just kind of depends on what's given to you. Um, so it's not always the case that you're going to get an infinity. Okay, so um, let me see. Let's do example number two. So for example two, we'll go um, on the integral from zero to, um, a lot of these always go up to infinity. Not too many go to negative infinity, but uh, we'll, we'll tr I'll try to see if I can find one for you guys that, that has a negative infinity in it uh, of this. Okay. So we're going to rewrite this. Since the, the upper bound, again, is the part that has the infinity, then we're going to do limit as x approaches, in, I'm sorry, not x, b, as b approaches infinity from 0 to b of e to the negative x dx. Now remember, for something like this, you're going to have to use a u substitution. So you're going to let u equal to negative x. So du would be a negative dx or negative du is dx. Okay, so since you're about to do a u substitution, you're going to write it out like this. Limit as b goes to infinity of the integral, negative integral, of e to the u du. Okay, well, the integral of e to the u is just e to the u. So this will be the limit as b goes to infinity of negative e to the u plus c. Now let's plug everything back in. So limit as b goes to infinity. Um, so u is negative x. So I'm going to write it like this negative 1 over e to the x, right? That's the same as e to the negative x. 
And then my upper and lower bounds uh, were 0 to B. So let's plug in our upper and lower bounds. Negative 1 over E to the B minus a negative 1 over e to the 0. So we'll kind of simplify this out. Limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 over e to the b plus 1. And now let's do a direct substitution. Okay, so we get negative 1 over e to the infinity plus 1. Well, 1 over e to the infinity, that's going to be a 0. Right? So this whole thing is just going to become a 0. So this is 0 plus 1, which is 1. So we say that this limit converges. because it actually has a finite um, answer. Okay, so we're going to put right here, has a finite answer. Finite means an actual answer, like a 5, a negative 3, a 1 half, radical 3, anything like that. An answer that can be written down other than infinity. If it has a, an infinite infinity, right, that, that's what we're thinking of. If it has an infinity in a sense, then it diverges. Okay, it does not converge to an answer. Are we okay so far? Any questions? Take some water real quick. All right. So in this next in this next uh, example, we're gonna kind of revisit one of those things that you guys need to have memorized, which is uh, tangent inverse. But we're going to do this problem here. I'm curious. I was going to experiment with the negative infinity on it. Because most of the examples that they give you guys always have infinity up on top. The only time that it kind of goes on top and bottom um, is when they need you to do a dual separation. So hold on. Before I do this, give me a second. Let me check something in your book. Uh, let me see. So um, if you do like a negative infinity problem, let's say like right here, example three. I mean, we can just do something really quick and easy, just, just so we can show you that there is no difference between whether there's an infinity on the bottom or on top. It's just the way you write it. Okay. So just something very simple, and then we'll move on to the one I was going to do. Um, so in this case, um, you are going to notice that the improper portion is on the bottom, so you're going to take the limit as a approaches negative infinity, okay, of the integral from a to 2 of 1 over x dx. Now we know that um, in this case we have a natural log integral, right? So this is ln absolute value of x from a to 2. Um, so this limit is going to be ln of 2 minus ln of the absolute value of a. Now, uh, you'll notice the 2 lost the absolute value because uh, the absolute value of 2 is 2. So I just put ln of 2. Um, so in this case, I could actually write it like this. The limit as a goes to negative infinity of ln of 2 over the absolute value of a. Right? So I could do it like that. 
Okay, or I don't have to. I don't have to rewrite it. You could just plug it in. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. Okay, um, so let's just kind of think about this. If I plug in my infinity, I get ln of 2 over, um, well, absolute value of, infin of negative infinity is infinity. So this would be 0. And the ln of 0 does not exist, right? Um, this actually goes to negative infinity. Okay, how do I know that? Well, uh, if I just kind of quickly sketch it, a natural log function looks like this. So as you approach 0, right, ln of 0 is going towards negative infinity. Right? So that would be uh, a negative infinity. So this, you would say that this diverges. Okay. Now, if you would have done it from this point, you could have had ln of 2 minus ln of infinity. Well, that would be ln of 2 minus infinity, but ln of 2 minus infinity is still negative infinity. Right? Either way, you get the same answer. So that would diverge as well. So um, let me give you one more of these things, uh, and then I'll, I'll let you guys uh, kind of work on homework. So um, the one we were going to do before that I said that I want you guys to hopefully remember your uh, inverse functions is something like this. Right, so in this case, hopefully you notice that the way it looks, this piece right here, okay, uh, if you integrate that, that's a tangent inverse, okay. Um, so uh, you have like your 1 over u squared plus a squared, that's equal to um, 1 over a tangent inverse of u over a plus c. Okay, when you're integrating this. Alright, so it's just a real quick reminder. That means that your A value, in our case, is a 1, and your U value is an X. So just remember that for later. Now we're going to start off with um, rewriting this. So limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to b of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Now in our very next step, we're going to utilize that definition on the right side, okay? Since my a is 1 and my u is x, then this right here becomes basically tangent inverse of x. That's what's going to happen when I do that integral. So limit as b goes to infinity of tangent inverse of x from 0 to b. Okay, I'm just using the definition to help me integrate it. Now I plug in my values to limit as b goes to infinity and then uh, this will be tangent inverse of b minus tangent inverse of 0. Now, if you remember, tangent inverse of 0 is 0. Okay, this part right here, that's a 0. Okay, because you're asking yourself... Um, Tangent of what angle gives you a zero for answer? So that would be a zero, right? Tangent of zero is zero. So tangent inverse of zero is also zero. Now tangent tangent inverse of b, well, or uh, as b approaches infinity, that's going to look like this. 
But if you think back about, uh, for your tangent functions, the only angle that gives you an undefined, meaning an infinite answer, would be pi over 2. So we would say that this converges. Okay. It has an actual answer. So um, your homework has already been put on um, Google Classroom, so you guys can kind of start working on that. And if you have any questions, just uh, let me know.